Okay, I'm I'm gonna record this, yeah, this uh, video. It's just okay. so I can um look back at it because this is the first time I've done this, so <laughs> this okay, that's perfect. Yeah, that's perfect because uh, <clears throat> at least you know you can still <clears throat> see the presentation or you know. Uh, but but I mean, when when you record uh, the, this thing, you you're gonna record it only for you or for both of us? Uh, I, I can say, if you want, I can send it to you too. If you want, if you want I can send both of us if you, if you want it. Okay, nice, nice. That would yeah, be yeah. Nice. I'm I'm gonna send you, I'm gonna send you a video and I'm gonna send you something else as well after. So um, I'll send you okay. two things: the video and something else. So this is good. This is my first time doing this. So um, thank I must say thank for the opportunity as well for letting me uh, do this. Yeah, um, me, I never did it, but I already attended uh, classes and uh, meetings, but I never really did a meeting myself. Yeah, same. Well, I, well I've done me. I used to, I'll show you my, in my work experience, I used to do this as a job for, for somebody else though, in, in the music industry. So now I'm doing it for myself now. But, um, but um, okay, so I first started out, here's my resume. So I started out, uh, I, went to, I went to the University of Hertfordshire. And um, I did a BA honors in music industry and entertainment management. So that's that's where I basically um, that's where I basically started. Um, so at university, what we learned mostly was uh, I learned about law, the law, the, so entertainment law. So law, law, the legal side of the music business is why that's what I learned about in university. So contract law, uh, you know, I mean publishing stuff like that. You know, just the legal side of it, your rights as an artist, because a lot of artists don't understand their rights. And in the music business, there's two ways you get paid: you get paid by your rights, and you get paid by ownership by owning the copyright. So if you own your copyright and you own your rights to your music, you get paid. So say for example, you write a song, okay? You write a song, I make the beat, okay? Whoever whoever makes the song and makes the beat owns the copyright and also owns the rights. Do you get what I'm saying okay. to you? Yeah, yeah, but like I mean, <clears throat> the, the the person that made the instrumental, he owns the rights for the instrumental, right? Uh, correct. Yeah. So, so the producer, if he makes the instrumental, he will own the copyright and the and the rights to that. So he own the the rights to the sound recording. You know, you know the MP3, the MP3 we play, the MP3 or the WAV file, that is the sound recording. Okay, the producer, if he made that, he will own that sound recording, and also he will because he made the beat. He will also get paid a um um a publishing a publishing check because he made the beat. So whoever makes you so make it simple. Whoever makes the music gets paid. Okay. They get paid two ways. They get paid a publishing for making it because they made they made the beat and they made the lyrics and they made the melody and they also get paid a copyright fee for owning the sound recording. So that's how you get paid. And that's why artists who sign to sign deals they they never they don't get any money of their music because they don't own their copyright. They don't own the sound recordings that we hear on, on Spotify or we buy in the shop. The record label owns the copyright because the artist signs that away when he signs his deal. Do, do you get what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So um, as we, as we go down here, as we're going to hear, so yeah, I, I did um, entrepreneurship in the music industry. I did accounting and finance. Uh, I, did, uh, I learned about different different structures and companies, different business types like corporations, uh, small businesses. Um, so, um, like, so, so for example, me and you, we, we will be uh, um, in the UK, we call it a sole trader. Meaning we're trading by ourselves, so we're not, so we're not a corporation, we're not a medium-sized business, but just um, one, we're just one entity. Meaning we're a sole trader. Meaning we just, we 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 we're doing the whole business on our own, and we're liable for all the for all the debts of the company. So when you when you when you, for example, I don't, I don't know if I'm saying too much to you, but basically when you're an artist, okay, you're self-employed, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So um, me and you right now we're self-employed, and um, and in university I really learned about different types of um employment stages as an artist so say for example a record label like sony music they're a corporation they're 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 a, they're a business type and the type of business they are is a corporation where someone like me and you who's putting our music ourselves self-releasing <coughs> where we're self-employed we're sole traders we're just putting our music on our own so i learned that in university about different business types um company structures and consulting a consultancy report um how to put together like a business report and um how to analyze your business, stuff like that. So I learned that all in uni. So after university, where well, I got got the knowledge, I went and worked in the music industry, and I got my uh, real first job in the music industry. I was a music. Uh, I basically got in the music licensing side of music, the licensing side. You know, the, the copyright side, the publishing side. I actually worked for a company that I worked for a performing rights organization called PRS for Music, um, and sorry, called PPL, which is now called P, which is now called PPL PRS, but. In, 
to make it more simple to you, in the in do you know when you sign up to BMI ASCAP, is that you know, use BMI and ASCAP in Canada? What is that? Okay, so basically, when you when you when you make their their BMI ASCAP PPL PRS for music, they're performing rights organizations. So as a, as an artist, you have rights in the law, in the law of your in the law of your country, the law of my country, the law of America. If you're an artist, you have rights and privileges. And mm-hmm. one of your one of your rights and privileges is that every single time you perform one of your songs in public, you have to be paid by law. Okay. Yeah, artists yeah. don't know this. They don't. They don't know I this. Didn't, I didn't even know that. No, no, no one knows this because no, they don't tell you this. I, I only know this because I, I like I just researched. I went to uni and I learned about it and I worked and I worked in the business. I worked. This is my job. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So when yeah. I was in my job, and even when I had the job, I still didn't really know it because I didn't really understand. I didn't I didn't really understand all of it. I was I was a lot younger back then, so I I, I was doing my job. You know, I'll be real to you. I was doing my job, so I didn't really understand really that much of it until I got into the role. But yeah, when you're an artist, you have to be paid. It's called a performance rights, performance rights. Yeah, so you have performance rights. Okay, so every time you perform a song, you will have to be paid a royalty for that in public, okay. though. Because anytime, but that's if you own the copyright. Okay, if you don't own the copyright, then you then you don't get paid. But actually, but e, the crazy thing about, 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 your, about your, perform, your, your performing rights, even if you don't own the copyright, you still get paid a performing a, a, a royalty for, for performing the song. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. performing rights is all about when you perform a song. But it's also when your song is played anywhere in public. So anytime your song is broadcast in anywhere in public, you have to be paid. So if they play your song in a shop, they have to pay you. If they play your song in a, in a, in a, in a hospital, they have to pay you. If they play your song on the radio, they have to pay you. If they play your song on, um, on a TV show, they have to pay you. Anywhere that song is used, that you own, you have to be paid a royalty. That's, that's a performance royalty. So they don't tell you that. So record labels don't tell you that because they get the they get the money from you. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, they're stealers, bro. They're stealers. Yeah, that's what they are. Their, their whole business is based on stealing and robbing you, basically. Because they all they do is market, promote, and advertise you. That's it. And fund. And they don't really fund you. They're more like investing in, in that in you because they're investing in themselves to make money from you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, that's crazy, man. It's that's the industry. So when I worked in the in the in the, in the music and uh, in the in the performing rights side of the music business, um, mm-hmm. I was dealing with B two B customers. I use I use copyright law to collect payments from my members from our customers. So basically, a lot of our customers were like B two B clients, like uh, football clubs. Uh, you know what I mean? Like big um, Subway. Subway is a, Subway is one of our, one of our customers. So Subway would call in, and then what what they have to do, they have to pay us a license to use the music to to use the music in their business, and then from that license, we will then pay the artists that were our members. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So if if you signed up to PPL or I don't know, Canada, I think in Canada there might be uh, BMI or ASCAP. If you sign up to BMI or ASCAP. And then you start you start doing a lot of live shows. You get paid a royalty for doing a, for doing those live shows. And then we we will go out there and make sure that anyone that's playing your music has to pay us a license. And from that license fee, we'll then pay you a royalty. Do you get what I mean? How how is it called uh, here in Canada? Is B what? Uh... I think I'm not sure. I know in, I know in America is BMI and ASCAP. Okay. So it, it, all you gotta do is um, take no, take the, take down the notes and just write down uh, performing yeah. rights society in Canada, performing rights society in Canada. Okay. Okay, and um, just write that down and then Google that and then it'll, it'll, it'll let you know which one it is. So anytime you write your songs, they have to pay your royalty, um, because you own your cajok by law. You're owed a performing right. You own a you own a performance royalty for when your songs are played or broadcast publicly anywhere. Is okay. this the same company that um, that will give me um, uh, the copyrights to my song? Oh, no, no. So once you, when you're an independent artist and you write a song, you own the copyright automatically. Oh, I didn't know. Okay, that's, that's yeah. cool. That's, that's yeah. cool. So a- anytime, anytime you write a song, you own the right to the lyrics. Okay. Anytime you write a song, you own the right to the melody. You own that automatically because you're the author. You're, 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 you you made it. it came from your idea you own it it's your it's your expression yeah, yeah. it's your human expression you own that so um the only reason signed artists don't own it because they sign they signed that away they sign away their rights and copyright to get a loan from a label to work for a label so they can get promotion advertising do you know what i'm saying for mm-hmm, for mm-hmm. their music so that so that that's that's why you don't know about it 
So, but yeah. when you're an independent artist, you have all these rights, you have all these privileges, and a record label makes billions of dollars because of your rights, because they own your rights and because they own your copyright. That's it. Because once you own, once once you uh, once you once you make a song and it becomes popular, if you own the rights to that, that song every single time that song is getting played, you're getting paid. So you're doing nothing. You're getting paid. That's yeah, what. It's, nice. Yeah, it's basically like a, a asset money. As, it's asset money. It's like um hedge fund money. You know what I mean? Like you don't you, you're making money when you sleep, basically. Yeah. So um. That's that's that's, that's the goal, man. That's yeah, that's, the, that's what I'm saying. Goal. But now, yeah. um, but sorry, correct. But now it's possible because before you couldn't market, promote, and advertise yourself. Before there was no way to, to do that. Only way to really do that was going for a record label. That's why they had so much leverage and so much power and authority over artists yeah. because the only way to make your copyright valuable, the only way to make people know about your music is through is through promoting it, advertising it, and marketing it. And then, yeah, because you know I mean? in the '90s <clears throat> there wasn't really like um, real internet platforms, you know. Yeah, there wasn't correct. YouTube and stuff like that. It was yeah, just correct. In the '90s, all they was MTV, uh, video TV, the box, video TV, and then radio. That was it. So yeah, it was, it, you're not gonna get there. There's only two ways, and record labels controlled it. You're only gonna get airplay if you go through them. But to go through them, you gotta give away your rights. You gotta give away your privileges. You gotta give away everything. Okay, it's yeah, not worth it, man. So I learned that, and then so after working in that side of the music business, I learned about the rights to put the importance of rights, and that wow, an artist has all these rights and all these like privileges, and we don't know about it. So I thought I go, I go, go let people know about this because this is this is not fair. So after that, I, I took my my last job before I went on my own thing was um, I worked in the music industry. But I worked for a YouTube company that um, helped artists make money from ads on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So my, my goal was to sign art in independent artists that were doing cover songs at the time or any independent artists or signed artists and bring them onto our network and then we 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 would help them make more money from the from the advertisements on YouTube. Um, uh, that's my job. YouTube ads it, it, it works well? It does, yeah, it does work. Yeah, yeah. So we had the client, one guy I signed, he was making he's making over a hundred pounds, two hundred pounds a month, sometimes three thousand pounds, you know, up from 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 YouTube ads. You know what I mean? Because okay. it's all about how many views you get and how many people... It's all about how many views you get and how many... What type of ads you have on there. So say, for example, some ads on YouTube, you can't skip them. Okay? Mm -hmm. Those ones... Those ads pay higher. They, it's called CP... They call it C... You should write it down. It's called CPM or CPU. CPM. Yeah? Okay. It's a cost per site. But it's called CPM. Basically, that's how much you get paid per ad. Okay. So... The, ad, the advertisements that are like 30 seconds that, that you can skip, they pay less. But the ones you can't skip, they pay much more. And it also depends what country you're in. So in America, UK, Europe, European countries, they pay more for advertisements. Advertisers pay more. Mm -hmm. Some countries, they pay less. So it all depends. But me personally, after working in that field, working in that job, I wouldn't look at that as a way to make money. I would look at that as a way to make great content. And the money, any any money, any money that comes from that, it's just a bonus. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's more for it's more for um uh, like a pro promotion. Correct. Yeah. Correct. It's more for promotion. It's more for branding. It's more for building engagement. It's more for building your community. It's more for providing value to your fans. You know what I mean? Now you can actually market and provide value to your fans yourself. If you do that well, money will come in other ways. You don't have to worry about ads. Ads, because they don't really pay that much. Like, if you get like a million views, you're going to get like a grand, two grand. It's not that good money, man. Like, yeah, like it's for, just extra. For, for, the, for the number of views, it's not, it's not, it's not a great number of it's, money. Nah, it's not. It's, a it's of not. You're not going to, you're not going to make a living off it. It's just, it's <laughs> one of those things is, it's bonus, you know, it's a bonus if you do make money for it, but it's not yeah. a way to make money and funding. So, um, in that job, I worked for a, I worked for some big artists. I was I was managing the rights for Pink Floyd. Have you heard of Pink Floyd before? Pink Floyd? Uh, no, I never heard of them. Yeah, even me. I'm not gonna lie. See, even me, I didn't know who they were until I got the job. I'm not gonna lie to you, innit? yeah. And then, but they were one of the biggest artists ever. Like they're like okay. they're like sold like like hundreds of millions of albums. They're like if you type in Pink Floyd, you'll see how big they are. They're like um, they're like yeah. famous, oh. famous, like one of the biggest acts in the music industry of all time. Um, or I also worked with a guy called Phil Collins. I worked with his. Um, basically, I, I used to help protect their online, their online yeah, rights. Phil yeah, Phil yeah. Collins. You know what Phil Collins for? Yeah, yeah, I know, I know Phil Collins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah I, we, um, when I worked for Leica, the company I worked for, I was manage. Um, I had to protect his digital rights. So my job was to make sure that 
really all, all we really did was I make sure that anyone that was uploading any Phil Collins music, any Pink Floyd music, my job was to take the videos down to make sure that all the traffic will go to their original channels on YouTube so they'll make more money. Okay. So you get me? So anyone so anyone who's uploaded any pure and anything Phil Collins that that, that Phil Collins can't, um didn't uh, didn't upload himself or his label didn't upload himself, Warner didn't upload themselves. Our job was to make sure that anyone that's uploading any Phil Collins or Pink Floyd um musical videos without their permission, my job was to take those videos down. So so when mm. so then anyone that was searching for Phil Collins uh music would only find it on Phil Collins official YouTube channel. So that way, it would help Phil Collins and, Phil and Pink Floyd make a lot more money. And that's what we did. We, make, we had to make thousands upon thousands of pounds um, in you know, every single yeah. freaking yeah, month. Yeah, I just seen make... he had, he, like, I just seen one of his videos is at 10 million views. Yeah. And we and that's, and what we, obviously, because Phil Collins has, he has a lot of fans. He's, he's been fans. He's got a lot of fans. That's at least... He's, 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 he, he, with, with those type of views, for sure, he's getting money with that. Okay, I'll get money, yeah. Every every month he's getting money. I see it. Thousands of pounds, bro. 50,000 pounds, 60,000 pounds. You know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe sometimes even more because they're very big. But do not forget, these guys are like the biggest in the industry. These two guys. You know, if, okay. you, can, if you can find their sales together, it's probably these quarter of a billion sales if you, if you can find them together. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. So these guys are like, they're bigger than Jay-Z and Kanye West, these guys, man. Like, way bigger. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Phil Collins for sure, man. Yeah, and Pink Floyd, I don't know, I don't know him that much, but I can see that he's like a, one of them top artists. Yeah, they're, they're like Rolling Stones, 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 Stones and them kind of people, you know, them old school ones that are really famous in the music industry, rock and roll. Like it's way before our time. I didn't know who they were until our research, and then when I found out who they were, I was like, "Whoa, these guys are massive, bro!" <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I see, I see on Google, like, yo, he has, he even has, like. His official website and on Wikipedia, they're talking about him. Uh, they're they're, they're a group, everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. They're big. They're like what you we find out. They're like they're like one of the biggest groups to ever come out of the music industry. Pink Floyd. They're like um, Pink. But yeah, but that's what I did. I did their stuff and um, yeah. So from there, I just you know I also helped other independent artists with that's their sick, with their. Bro. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's it. That's nice. Yeah, it's a journey though. Don't get me wrong, it's a big journey though. But it's a big journey. And then after that, I didn't. I just didn't like working for people. I didn't like working in the music industry, and I didn't like working for people. So um, I started my own company. As it's just me right there, a little big head, uh, doing self entertainment. I was always, I always had it as a brand for years now. But after like that job, I just wanted to work for myself and make it into actual business and make it to a brand. So um, and right now, what what I want to do now is I want to, I want to teach um independent artists. And uh, just people, uh, how to be in, in in business for themselves, how to build brands, and let them understand the economics of of the of of the music business of hip hop, and of their business, and so they can build a business for themselves because it's yeah. the first time ever better, where independent better. artists can build a business. You couldn't build a business five years ago. Only really the last two years is maybe even years come around to this level where you can actually build a business for yourself because all the tools and resources, all the tools and resources are there. You can make a you can make a track in your house. You can make a video in your house on your phone. You can upload it on your house yeah, to, true, to, mm-hmm, to the mm-hmm. internet so you can market yourself, promote, promote yourself. The problem is is, is the knowledge. How do I do the marketing? How do I do the promotion? How do I do the advertising? And that's why you go to a record label because they know how to do that. So in today's today's class, you told me your your three problems that you were having. So I put together a slide for you, basically discussing each point that you're having problems with, and so you can understand them better for yourself. And so when you leave here, you have a much better understanding on the problems that you're having right now. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I'm gonna start the I'm gonna start the um. Starting now. I'm just gonna stop stop screen stop uh, screen sharing for the moment to make sure my um make sure my microphone is all plugged in correctly it's just before I start. Uh, any questions before? Any questions? No, everything uh, seems all right, bro. Like I understand uh, most yeah. of it, like everything, you know. So, yeah. Okay, so you call you call it figure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, sure. There's a lot of st- stuff I didn't know before, but like you know, like especially for the rights, the copyrights, and. Uh, the company uh, um, for the um, um, you said you, you were talking about like uh, the the performance rights and everything. I, I never knew about that before, you know. But um, now, bro, now, bro, uh, so like I, I I get it, and it's 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 even like a better opportunity for me, you know, because um, I think your microphone is closed now. 
I, I think your microphone is closed now because I can't hear you anymore. No, I don't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yeah, now I hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just make sure it was on because um, I still don't know. I'm sometimes with this microphone, I'm still learning how to do it all. But, but you can hear me now, clearly now, yeah? Yeah, me too. I'm using a condenser mic for, oh. for, for the Oh, great, Zoom. great, great. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna get this. We're gonna get this. Um, we're gonna get this show rolling now. So I'm gonna put the timer on because we've got half an hour to uh, to uh, to do this. I gotta make sure I do it in time because I'm still learning how to deal with this stuff, brother. Okay, so I'll get the slide ready. Get the slide ready. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna share my screen with you. Uh, can you see my screen again? Freestyle flows. That's your eye. DIY, bit of Mozart, sprinkle bit of hip hop, do yourself entertainment. Welcome to my art gallery. Uh, 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 let's go. Uh, it's been my art gallery. Real people, can you see? Man, only spitting truth. Uh, this be my art gallery. Painting picture, can you see? Man, up in the booth. Uh, this be my art gallery. Paint a picture, can you see, man? Only spitting truth, uh. It be my art gallery. Real people around with me, man. I'm in the booth.